Cowboy fans and YouTubers. It's that VA Dallas Cowboy fan coming back at you. Thank you for liking, sharing, subscribing, and commenting down below. I just wanted to make a quick hit video out here for y'all. Not really, you know, going through the whole process of a mock draft or uh, anything like that, but trying to explain why I want to basically trade back in the draft instead of the rumor trading up in the draft that uh, has been reported. Uh, I know a lot of people want Kyle Pitts and they're willing to trade up to get him. That's great. That's fine. Uh, the cost to move up from 10 to 4, on the other hand, is probably going to be a bit of a hurdle. And I don't want to give up more draft capital just to get one guy. Uh, it's not happened too often in our history, obviously, of us moving up to get anybody in the first round. And it's worked out. So, staying pat at 10 or trading back is what I propose. As this guy cuts his turn short and almost hits me head on. And uh, the best scenario I see right now, if we do the trade back scenario, a lot of people have been talking about moving back with and trading with uh, New England. I could see that happening. Uh, they can move up to 10, get whomever they want. Uh, probably a quarterback that hasn't been mentioned or anything. And we can move back and get the defensive help that we've been looking for. Plus, we gather more picks. But that's just the way I see it. Uh, we can also just stay pat at 10 and draft the best available player, which more than likely will happen. Uh, it probably won't be the Kyle Pitts pick that everybody wants. Um, I mean, I see the hype train for it, but knowing the Cowboys history, I wouldn't get on the hype train because uh, you know how we've drafted guys with all the hype and they've kind of came out duds or they haven't lived up to all that hype after a couple years. So... I don't want to just, you know, I don't want to do a disservice to the kid if he comes in and we basically ruin him. Uh, he doesn't live up to his potential because of the organization he goes to, basically. I don't want to do that to him, but if we do pick him, I hope they use him properly. But, you know, living through that last regime, the hope to have somebody and have them work out has been highly criticized because of the organizational failures around them and the coaching around them. So I don't want to ruin this kid just because, you know, he was a freak athlete at a combine or a pro day. Uh, but if that's who they pick, that's who they pick if they have a chance to get him. Uh, Jeff Kavanaugh did a video yesterday explaining that it wouldn't be the Cowboys or any other team if they weren't doing their due diligence and calling uh, Atlanta or Cincinnati at five just to gauge what's going on. I mean, you see who's up there and what teams are uh, willing to uh, trade around with just to get a certain player now. But if we think the draft is gonna go the way we do, then we can sit back at 10 because more than likely four or five straight uh, quarterbacks are going quickly off the board and that's just going to push guys we want down after that you might have to start figuring out um you know moving around possibly up to six maybe but we'll see uh i'm just excited to see the draft get some fans back have a little more atmosphere at the actual draft again i don't mind seeing jerry draft from a yacht because he seemed to have nailed it on the head last year if he can do it again this year oh man but you know that's my thinking right now just trade back get more get who you want at like 15 with uh new england's pick and then use those picks to move back into the first or move up higher into the second to get 
another player that you want right off your board. But that's just my line of thinking. Uh, in other thoughts, uh, the relaxed jersey rules, the numbers. I see that it, it was an idea from Kansas City, and it wasn't something that they were, uh, you know, just something that was done on the fly. Apparently, it was because they ran out of jersey numbers. And unlike the Dallas Cowboys, they retired their jersey numbers. So having so many players and having the uh, guys picking their numbers and whatnot, <laughs> they ran out of numbers that they could only use retired people's numbers. That's kind of a you problem. That's not a league-wide problem. That's something your organization did when they thought to retire jerseys and didn't think ahead of time that yeah, we might have to use these jersey numbers again. That's why the Cowboys don't reissue numbers uh, unless they're real significance to uh, former players. Now, there's some numbers they'll probably never touch again, and there's some numbers that you have seen reused. 94, 54, uh, 33. So we've seen these numbers out here, but you're not going to touch 12, 8, 22, stuff like that. Uh, we've seen 88s reused, but when you have a special talent at that position, you kind of go with it, I'd say, but you're not going to like go to San Francisco and tell them you d you're not going to be able to use 81 because T.O. wore it. I mean, they can reissue 81 in San Francisco if they want to. We can. We've seen players take the number. But if they retire jerseys like Kansas City, then yeah, you're kind of up the creek when players come in and you can't get that number. That's, that's a more you problem than a Cowboys problem. But that's just my thoughts. Uh, quick little hits. You never know what's going to happen with the Cowboys. It's a Friday. It's usually the day they do their uh, news dump. Uh, other than the ongoing Deshaun Watson saga where Nike dropped him as being a sponsor and uh, his life basically going to pot right now. We'll just see if anything else happens in the NFL. Until then, it's VA Dallas Cowboy fan. Out.